I work for a company that deals in luxury watches, and I've seen all manner of extravagant, over-the-top, but the one that we got earlier this week, this is the Constantine Chaking Joker. Chai Kinezde is, is a genius. He managed to create a profitable, independent watch company outside of Switzerland. Making any company profitable is a hard enough task. I can't even monetize this YouTube channel because you are not subscribed. So subscribe. But taking a watch brand from zero to a multi-million dollar business in 20 years is unheard of. So, how exactly did he do that? Our friend Kostya is not exactly a watch guy with a silver spoon up his bum. Born in the Soviet Union, at a very young age, he was more curious about where his next meal would come from rather than timekeeping devices. Communist kids had this weird obsession with radio and making things with their hands, probably because you couldn't buy anything. So that's exactly how young comrade Chaikin occupied his time, by making radios from shit he found in the trash. After serving in the army and working as a welder, the Soviet Union finally started falling apart and working with hands wasn't paying the bills anymore, so the entire country had to get creative. Chaikin and his friends started selling watches. That's an odd business to start when a country is going up in smoke, but it does make total sense. Chaikin was based in St. Petersburg, Russia, where a lot of people made money during this era. Like Putin is from St. Petersburg, come on, connect the dots. And what happens when you make a lot of money very quickly? You start buying unnecessary stuff, like watches. And as you drink a lot too, your watches get damaged frequently, making selling and servicing watches a profitable business. It seems like Roman Sharp is living a decent life doing exactly that. Talking about just personal assets. Just personal. It would be between the 10 and 20. Okay. So why build something yourself? Well, the margin is significantly higher, and Russians just like doing shit themselves. However, there was no YouTube back then to learn from. So Chaikin had to come up with a strategy himself and live with the consequences. When you enter a new industry, you always attack the big guy first. It's either you succeed and you're a genius, or you fail quickly and save yourself a lot of time. That's called YOLO, and for more information on that, you can refer to the Wall Street Bets Reddit. As an entry into watchmaking, Chaikin decided to create a watch tourbillon from scratch, which is the pinnacle of watchmaking. They started making tourbillons a while ago, and that seemed easy enough with their tools. I bought a watchmaking book in French, which had all of the information and got to work. What a fucking legend. I need to make a watch. I got instructions in French. What's stopping me? Chaikin proceeded to make a clock tourbillon, was not satisfied, made a clock that will tell you the Easter date, which is impossible and has not been done before because it's mathematically complicated and nobody gives a feck about Easter when you can sell a 700 year old Daytona for 600,000. With enough practice building clocks, which is a small and dead market, Chaikin was ready to make a move into the wristwatch industry to build a successful watch brand. You need a couple of things. Product, audience, credibility, and be in business for at least 500 years. This fucks over pretty much everyone as it determines the price you can charge for your watches and directly influences your profit margin. Old stuff, big price. Old hype stuff, even bigger price. Or you can take over the industry the Elon Musk way. Produce a limited piece for the top of the top. Couple of them, patent everything, try impressing some gathering of French sounding institutes. Speed run your way to become a president of said organization. Congratulations, you solve credibility and audience. Now you produce a watch with moving eyes, which is cute and costs 10 grand. All that's left is letting the peasants in on the joke, and you've tipped supply and demand your way. As you can produce only about 150 pieces a year. You partner up with the Chinese who desperately need at least some credibility, and they produce your design and open up a huge market for you. Use cheap gold labor and low taxes to improve your bottom line. And don't pay a dime to the Swiss with their centuries of history and fancy suits. This is how Constantine Chaikin fucked the entire Swiss watch industry in their sleep and is on the way to becoming the next big thing. So what can we take away from this story? His hard times build hard men and hard men build good times. So next time life gets hard, try building a tour villain with no prior knowledge. Make the most complicated watches in the world from scratch. Pioneer Mars time tracking. And when all of this fails, 
Make a watch with a minion face so an oil billionaire goes, haha, how much? 